How's it going? This is Hoyman and today we're taking a look at the Underground Toys War Doctor figure. And we'll also be taking a look at a custom painted TARDIS as well. So for the packaging, this is obviously celebrating the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. And this figure came out quite a few years ago now, so it's been well over 50 years since the series debuted. But anyway, you have a nice window to see the whole figure inside. Looks really nice. And then moving to the back, you have some information about the character as well as a screenshot from the movie. And then you also have some legal stuff at the bottom. To open the box, just pop open the top lid. And there's the figure all together with his accessories. So here's the actual figure and for such a small figure, it's impressive how much detail this figure has. The overall sculpt is really nice and there's just a lot of paintwork and nice details going on in this figure. So looking close at the face, I don't believe they use 3D printing technology for the head sculpt. But in either way, I feel that they did a really good job sculpting John Hurt's look really well. It doesn't 100% look like John Hurt, but I think for the most part, as soon as you see this figure, you can tell it's John Hurt. So I think they did an overall good job. There's a lot of details in the wrinkles going on in the face. Looks very realistic for the most part. The eyes are painted on very nicely as well. And then the facial hair has some nice sculpt and details going on. And then you move on to the hair. Nice use of the shading to bring out the strands of the hair. So it's nice detailing there. Moving down to the torso. The scarf is well sculpted and detailed has a really nice weathering look to it. And then you move to the belt parts here. Paint a nice metallic silver paint. Looks really nice in contrast. That's the same for the chains and the buttons on his waistcoat as well. Same for the belt buckle. And then you have his long trench coat, which is really well sculpted and detailed. You can see all the creases and folds throughout it to bring out the real makes it look quite realistic especially all all on the back and again you have the really nice wash to really bring out the weathering and the very old age sort of texture to it and then his hands are well sculpted as well for the most part and then his legs Again, they continue the really nice folds and realism and you have the nice weathered texturing of the shading as well. And then down to his boots, really nice details. You can see all the creases and folds and then even some undone buttons here. It's a nice touch there. Whereas the side are all done up. And then the shoes are well sculpted and detailed as well. And then the soles aren't really sculpted, but they do have some copyright information. So here's the custom painted TARDIS. And I'd just like to first point out that I did not paint this TARDIS myself. I got it online. So basically this is supposed to be custom painted to fit the War Doctor's TARDIS in the movie. And I think overall they did a really good job. So whoever painted this did a really good job. So you can see all the nice weathering and painting on the surface here. Nice weathering and texturing on the phone part. And then especially like the parts on the windows have a nice gravelly sort of texture to make it show its age. And all the details continue to the top as well. And then on the other side, more texturing, weathering at the bottom. All the details continue. Same for the back. And then same for the other side as well. 
And then the bottom is pretty much left untouched. But you do get this dial here. And what that's supposed to be is you put your finger here and then you can just spin the TARDIS like so. So it's a nice little gimmick there. The doors themselves can open. So inside you can see the inside of the time machine, which I believe is pretty much left untouched. And then for here, you can open the flap as well to see the phone inside. So overall, the TARDIS itself is well sculpted. And overall, I think the customizer did a really good job to make it resemble the TARDIS in the War Doctor movie. And this is in scale with the War Doctor himself as well. So for articulation, the neck is on a ball joint, which is actually at the base. So you can get very slight movement. And although the scarf is a soft material, it restricts almost all of the movement. So you're not going to get too much movement there. So you can look down very slightly, look up, not really a whole lot. Twist his head slightly side to side, but you can twist his head like so. For the shoulders, they're on a kind of hinge, so you can bring his arm out all the way to the side. And because the coat is a softer material, it doesn't restrict the arm too much. You can also bring his arm forward, bring his arm back. He has the bicep swivel here, but it really breaks the sculpt. He's got single jointed elbows. Again, it really breaks the sculpt here. And then he's kind of got hinged hands. But you're not going to get too much movement due to the sleeve. For the waist, there's a hinge at the waist, so you can spin the torso like so and then for the hips they're on hinges so you can kick all the way to the side like so and then you can kick forward about that much you can kick back that much and then he's got a single jointed knee but again it breaks the sculpt and then he's got a hinge at the where the boot meets so you can rotate his foot like so and that's it so for such a small figure he still has quite a bit of articulations but due to the design in some areas he is quite restricted for the most part but in terms of for this character in particular he doesn't really do that many dynamic poses in the movie so you should be able to get all the poses that you want but that's the figure. Let's take a look at the accessories. So first he does come with his electric screwdriver, which is really well sculpted, has a nice metallic finish, and then a nice sort of metallic red for the tip. But I do feel that it's missing a bit of detail at the tip here. I believe it's supposed to have some black and yellow, so it would be nice if that was painted, but for the most part, it still works. Next, we have the moment, which is just full of details. Overall, this is really well sculpted. Pretty much every face of the cube has a lot of detail and sculpt going on. Just overall, a really nice looking piece. And then finally, he comes with an interchangeable head. So overall, it's well sculpted and detailed. So my final thoughts are, overall, this is a really nice looking figure. It's really well sculpted, really nice detailing. And for such a small figure, it's just overall looks really impressive. And like I already said, I feel that they've really got the likeness of John Hurt really well. It's very recognizable to the actual person. But I do have some gripes with the figure. So first off, the whole figure has a lot of nice textured and weathering effects going on with all the shading. But I will say the waistcoat underneath doesn't really have any of the shading at all. So it looks really clean and really stands out from the rest of the figure. So it would be nice if it was maybe a darker shade of the color or maybe just have some dark shades of a wash to really make it merge with the rest of the figure. So it kind of looks a bit odd that it stands out in that regard. 
And then some minor grises, just the articulation really. So the figure is nicely sculpted and looks really natural when the figure is standing completely straight. But when you start to move the figure, it does kind of start to look a bit odd in some areas. So with the arm, it looks really thin up here. When you rotate the arm, it really breaks the sculpt. Same for bending the elbow here. And then for the legs, it really breaks the sculpt on the knee as well. So for the most part, because there isn't any ankle articulation, you're mainly just going to be stuck with this figure having very sort of static poses, which is pretty much what he does in the movie anyway. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem there. But for the most part, if you are a fan of this character or the movie itself, or just the series in general, then I can still recommend this figure. This figure has been out for quite a few years now, but from what I've seen, he isn't too hard to find and the price isn't too expensive either. So you should be able to get him for a decent price. So if you want to get your hands on this custom painted TARDIS, I believe it's not just this one exclusively. From what I've seen online, they've did, they've done quite a lot of these custom painted ones and I managed to find this one on eBay back in the day. So if you're lucky, you should be able to still find one online. It's not an official sold product with the custom painted, so it might be a bit hard to track down. But if you can find it for a price you're willing to pay, then I'm sure it'll be worth it for you. But that's my review. Thank you for watching and enjoy some pictures. Thank you.